and thanks for joining us on Bistec on Ghana Web TV. I am Ernestina Sewa Asante. On today's edition, we take a look at an indigenous company using plastic waste to manufacture roofing tiles. My colleague Maoli Aholumega has the full report on this innovation created by Dofo Group. Welcome to yet another exciting edition of This Tech on Ghana Web TV. My guest today is a young entrepreneur who is using advanced technologies to develop and manufacture roofing tiles through plastic waste. Before I introduce my guest, I'll take a quick break. We'll be right back. Welcome back. My guest is Dr. Kweku Ejepon, and he's the CEO of Dolphin Group of Companies. Doc. Welcome to Bestech. How are you? I'm fine. How Great. Are you? I'm doing very well. Great. Yeah, so you've been a CEO of Dolphin Group of Companies for some time now. Just briefly share with us how your journey started to where it is now. Wow. <laughs> well, this journey has been quite a long journey. Um, every journey begins very small and very humble. But. Um, I started very small. Mm. We started with our roofing. Um, actually, we have a car dealership as well. Oh, wow. And uh, we started with our roofing gradually. Um, as time goes on, the roofing is doing well. Mm. But as time goes on, I realized that what can I do to solve a problem in this country? So I decided to come up with uh, an advanced roofing tiles, mm. which is the Ecofill ecosystem. That's the Ecofill Ghana. That's the name of that company, mm. which is under Dolphin the Dolphin Group. Group. Okay. So um, I did my research, mm. and I traveled a couple of times to Ukraine. Mm. Um, that's where I obtained the machines. Okay. So I brought few Ukraine people, I think about four Ukrainians, to come and set up the factory and do training. Because we also have to give something back to the people. To our people. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, just doing roofing sheet, you can't employ so many people. But with this one, uh, we are creating so many employment. Mm -hmm. We are getting so many people off the street especially with the boys in traffic that mm. are asking for money from people. We are using them to collect plastic waste. And um, we are also turning the plastic waste into something meaningful. Mm. So this has been our journey. I can't, I don't want to go in too much <laughs> because if I go in, maybe some of your viewers might be sad, <laughs> you know, because like I said, every journey starts very humble mm -hmm. and how it started is uh history and mm -hmm. it's now become a mystery yeah so like you said i mean we'll, we'll talk about some of the challenges that you faced and then some of the some of the highs that you've also achieved but i want to come to the the plastic waste bit yes. what was that one key thing that you saw before setting up the companies the roofing sheet and all of that and you wanted to use plastic waste okay so um one day I was driving through town and it was raining mm. and I saw too much plastics mm. flooding the gutters, especially the under 20 microns. Mm. That's the, um, your sachet water and the, the black one. So I was like, how can we solve this problem? Because you see, we don't have to look at what we will get. We also have to look at what we can give. That's one thing about life. One should always look at how to give. Mm. It's much better than to receive. If you learn how to give, it will come naturally. Mm. So that's what made me go into it. 
Mm. That's what made me do that research and see what I can do with that plastic. Mm. And it's not only the roofing tiles. Mm. We can also use it for pavement blocks and other things. So we are working on new equipment okay. as we speak now. Okay. So you source most of the, the, the raw materials locally right here? All our raw material, mm. with the exception of the color, the okay. pigment that we use. Mm. All our raw materials are locally. Mm. All the plastics, the sand, and um, the only thing, the PP2, we do it ourselves. We produce our own PP, mm. you know. So um, nothing is imported. Imported, okay. Yes. Everything yeah. is locally. Okay. Yeah, so I want to come to climate change because I, I think you are doing something really amazing with the plastic waste. So we have global climate change. In, in our world today, um, the weather is looking very funny at different times. The, the weather that we are supposed to experience, we are not getting to experience. How is the echo fail that you are producing? How are you infusing climate change to sort of solve some of these problems? Okay, so with, with that product, mm. um, we took it to scientific research to do um, a test on it. Okay. And this product can actually withstand um, a heat of 230 degrees Celsius of uh, heat. That's quite a lot. Yes. <laughs> so, I mean, in Ghana, our climate does not go that high. Mm. So, where I think they need us the most is on the desert side, mm. you know. And also, um, I mean, this product is, is one of a kind, mm. you know, um, it don't rust. It don't rot. Um, it's it's also a fire retardant. Mm. You know because of the sand content in it. Okay. When there is fire, it will not burn. Mm. It's um it, it don't break. Okay. Assuming you are up working as an installer, and you drop it, it will not break. Mm. And even if it break, we can recycle it again. Mm. So there is no such thing as waste, but. In terms of climate change, I think this is one of the best. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So I want to come down to cost, which is a very important aspect of every business. How how are you ensuring that the products that you are you are producing are cost effective and they're also durable? I mean, I've had the chance to to see some of them, and it was quite impressive. So um, as cost goes. Mm. For now, I would say it's around the same price as the alu zinc okay. that we are doing now. Mm. But I can guarantee you that this is much better and it turns out to be cheaper than, than the alu zinc because okay. this lasts longer, it's more durable. And um, two, um, it's... it's, it's it's not that expensive. Mm. The only problem or the only challenge we are having now, I may say, mm. is um, our production capacity. Production capacity, okay. You know, mm. our production, you know, Ghana, you have to do everything on your own. Yes. <laughs> you know, so um, we are doing it gradually. Okay. Our production capacity. We are working on You're it. Working on Once it. we can produce more, I think we can do it for every Ghanaian mm. to afford okay. some by God's yeah. grace. So I understand you've been doing this for some time now, quite some time now. You've you've had other businesses as well, but this is what you're mainly focusing on. I'm sure you've also had some challenges along the way. If there are, can you share some of those challenges and what were, what were those key lessons that you learned from some of the challenges that you experienced as a young entrepreneur? Oh, you see. <laughs> the challenge is um, one with being an entrepreneur it's very tough <laughs> yeah, especially it outside of the world you have um, people that believe in you and people that might think you are just joking mm. until you get there before they start to believe. Um, I've had challenges with workers. Mm. I have had challenges with the system. Mm. There is no help. 
before you continue, does the system frustrate you? <laughs> uh, I wouldn't want to be stepping on any, any toes. All right. Good. I think um, it could be better. It could be better. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I think for most entrepreneurs, there's, they also share the same view that it can, it can be better. It can be better mm. because the challenges, if we're going to talk about the challenges we have, mm. I don't think we will go today. <laughs> there's been, I mean, in any business, there's ups and downs. Mm. We've had our good times and our bad times. Mm. Our good times are very, very good and our bad times are very, very bad. Okay. But in all we keep giving glory to god because okay. some companies started and they are no more mm. but 10 years mm. more and still counting we will continue on to thank god amen yeah. before we go i just want to find out from you you like you've been operating for some period what's what's the future of the echo field and the dolphin um the whole dolphin group that you, you run to be sincere, the future of Ecofield is super bright. Sometimes it, it, it frightens me. <laughs> Why does it frighten you? It frightens me in a sense that, can you imagine, look at a place like Northern Region. Mm. If you see the amount of plastic waste that is flooded in that place. Mm. Um, we are looking at setting up in all the capital regions mm, okay. to collect the waste and also do our shredding there. So we bring the raw materials to our um, factory. Mm. The first one we went to where Ecofill is mm. for production. Okay. So I look at doing this. It means Ghana plastics will be a thing of the past mm. and um, we also pray that all Ghanaians will um, contribute in terms of uh, helping to collect the waste mm. and also participating in some of our products mm. and using it so that we can get a better Ghana mm. and I'm looking at also um, doing export okay I'm talking to few people in few countries, so we want to export some of our products to all over because everybody, I think, is a good thing and everybody must enjoy it, not only Ghanaians. No, only Ghanaians, okay. So we yeah. all have to enjoy it. Yeah. Doctor, I've been having a very interesting conversation with you. Thank you so Thank much you for sharing. So much. I've been speaking with Dr. Kwekwe Ejepon and he's the CEO of the Dolphin Group of Companies. He's been sharing his journey with me and also he's also a young entrepreneur who's using advanced technologies to develop and manufacture roofing tiles. He's been my guest on this week's edition of Best Tech. Many thanks for watching. Doc is showing me some of the stuff he has. You can see them right here. All this is made through plastic right here. Yes, you can see very, very durable as well. So yeah, patronize it. <laughs>
this one machine is the one that that's yes, the, the one crashing. that crashes. It. Okay, so how, how many? If you have an idea, how many amounts of plastic can it, can the oh, machine we can, crash? We can crush about let's say ten tons a day. Wow, that's yes. quite a lot. That's quite a lot of wow. plastic. Wow. And um, we also do crash the under twenty microns, under twenty microns, such okay. as the pure water. Rubbers as well. So it's not just the plastic bottles. Not just the one. plastic bottles. Okay. And we don't only use plastic bottles. Okay. We use car bumpers, okay. computer casings. So that's a lot of plastic. recycling yeah. materials. Exactly. That you, yeah. exactly. So you are, what, what, your, what your outfit seeks to do is not to waste plastic. So you have all a team of people that look out for all the plastic waste yes. around it and yes. you bring it here. What we want to do is we want to keep the city clean. Great. You know, Duffield itself. Is a company that does a roofing sheet with the um, alu zinc, aluminium. Mm. But we came to realize that we have to solve some problem mm. as our corporate social responsibility. Mm. So we came up with uh, this plastic recycling mm. into a roofing house. Wow. Yes. Okay. And you've been operating for some time now. I mean, we can still take yes. a walk. You've been operating for some time now. How, how has it been for you? Oh, it's not bad at all. Mm. Um, the, the product itself, I get so happy when I see it mm. because um, it's a problem solving. Yeah. As we are solving a problem, we are also getting something out of it. Mm. So, I mean, it, 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 it's so overwhelming so when about, I see the product. Yeah. So, uh, we are the next point of it. What, yes. what exactly goes on at this stage here? This side mm. is where the, the plastic mm. comes out. Okay. That's after then, it's crashed and That's everything. after it's crashed. Okay. All right. You know, there is a little secret. I can't oh, really no, put it out there. <laughs> Company you know, secrets, but, that's yes. <laughs> but this is where we do the actual production. Okay. So this is the production. Mm. These are some of the products. Okay, so these are the ones that have been manufactured. Yes. This okay. has been manufactured already. Wow. It's quite it's heavy. heavy. Yes, it's heavy. still very hot. Yeah. <laughs> it just came out of the press. That's wow. why it's hot. So all this is from plastic? It's from plastic. Very interesting. Yes. It's from plastic. Wow. So, um, I mean, that's how it comes out. Okay. It comes yeah. as a paste. All right. When, hello. The, this okay. is the plastics okay. that end up choking our gutters, mm. creating floods. Mm. This is what we use it for. This wow. is how it ends. Wow. So after this, it comes out this mm. way. Okay. This one just came from this oh. hot. Oh, okay. It's very yeah. hot. <laughs> yeah, no. Wow. That's very, very interesting. So I see you have a, a number of people here, and yes. uh, part of your job is to create some form of employment. Yes, we are. Yes, and we are. So in terms of your staff strength, how many people work on the factory? For here? now, we have about 30 people. Okay. Yes. Right. Um, and and the, that's the direct, the direct of okay. workers. So you have a direct but and indirect. And indirect. The ones that are collecting plastics and bringing it, you know, are. Uh, we can say about 60, 70 okay. that brings plastics and then we pay them. That's quite a lot yeah, of a so number for you. We are trying to make sure we create employment for okay. um, the country as well. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so finally, uh, before we go, once this is done, where next do you take it? Do you have, does it have to go to another process? No. Okay. Once it's done, okay. now it goes to the site. Okay. Then we have uh, our in installers mm. that do the installation, which we will show you a few of the jobs that we have done. No problem. So we'll yes, before, thank you so much. You're most welcome, welcome, sir. There you have it. I'm speaking with Mr. Dr. Ojepon, and he's the chief executive for Dolphin Roofing Systems. We've been talking about how they are using plastic waste to solve and eco-friendly and also create what we have here as um, plastic roofing sheets, towels. Yes, it's been my guest on this week's edition of This Tech. Many thanks for watching. Thank you, Maoli Aholumega, for that report. Up next is Biz Headlines. To our very first story, President Nanado Dankwe Kufuado has directed the Commissioner of the Customs Division of the Ghana Revenue Authority, Colonel Retired Konjo Damoa, 
to hand over his duties to an acting deputy commissioner. According to a statement signed by the executive secretary to the president, Nana Bedietu Asante, the decision comes following the expiration of Kennel Damwa's contract in October 2021. He is expected to hand over to the deputy commissioner, Seidu Idrisu Idisa, who will act in the role pending a substantive appointment made by the president. Kennel Kojo Damwa's dismissal comes at a time he is being investigated by the Office of the Special Prosecutor for his role in corruption-related activities involving La Bianca Company Limited. A finding from the Office of the Special Prosecutor dated August 3rd entitled Report on Investigation into Alleged Commission of Corruption and Corruption-Related Offenses involving La Bianca Group of Companies and the Customs Division of the Ghana Revenue Authority indicated, among other things, that the frozen food company owner used their position to evade taxes. Initially, while reacting to the report, the Customs Board said any attempts by the special prosecutor to bring him down will not work. However, in a recent interview, he said he will work with the OSP to assist with their investigations, adding that the special prosecutor has the right to investigate. Deputy Finance Minister John Kuma has noted that the Afro Exim Bank loan has been fully received by government. According to him, the full amount of $750 million hit the account of government on Monday, August 29th. He, however, said that $37 million of the amount has been set aside for debt servicing obligations. His comment comes on the back of concerns by the ranking member of Parliament Select Committee on Finance, Kessel Atoforsen, on the whereabouts of $37 million from the Afro Exim Bank loan facility. Australian company Cassius Mining Limited is set to sue Ghana for $395 million at the London Court of International Arbitration over what it says was the country's role in helping another mining company steal $142 million worth of gold from its concession. According to the Sydney Morning Herald report, both Cassius Mining Limited and a Chinese state-linked mine run by the Shanzi Mining Company stood opposite each other in Talency where they had purchased parcels of land for mining in 2008 and 2014. In comparison to the much smaller Shanzi mining permit area, which consists of two small leases of less than 0.25 kilometers square, the Cassius mining permission area is around 13.79 kilometers square. However, Cassius observed that the Chinese mining company was operating beyond what it had been permitted to do in 2017. The Australian company later confirmed that the Shanzi Mining Company was mining from its concessions and was concealing it. The cost of international air tickets has increased exponentially in recent weeks as local demand remains elevated and more passengers from neighboring countries opt to fly out of Accra to various destinations in Europe, America and popular holiday destinations around the world. A round trip from Accra to London in economic class, which used to be 10,000 cities just a few weeks ago, has increased to between 20,000 and 43,000 cities, depending on availability and the airline of choice. Though airfares are generally high in summer, the increased demand from passengers from neighboring countries and the depreciation of the local currency against the U.S. dollar are the main undercurrents for the current surge in prices. The president of the National Association of Nigeria Travel Agencies, Susan Akori, confirmed the new development to Nigerian news media, The Punch, last week. The Office of the Registrar of Companies has begun processes to strike off 2,584 dormant and defaulting companies from its companies' register. The second phase of the delisting exercise is expected to continue up to the end of December this year and forms part of efforts to clean up the company's register which started earlier this year. 
In a statement issued by the ORC and cited by Ghana Web, it explained that these dormant companies failed to comply with the directive issued by the Registrar of Companies for all companies to file their annual returns and financial statements or risk being struck off the company's register. The ORC said the exercise has so far affected companies, which include private and public companies limited, the unlimited by shares, private public companies limited by guarantees, schools, churches, associations, unions, fan clubs, etc., professional bodies and external companies. Providing further, providing further legal basis for the move, the office said the exercise is being carried out in accordance with Section 289 of the Companies Act 2019, Act 992. After payment of $2 million to Africa Investor Holdings Limited by the Ghana Infrastructure Investment Fund towards the construction of the Accra SkyTrain project, according to the latest Auditor General's report, the project may not come to fruition as the contractor is yet to receive an operational license to begin work. Africa Investor Holdings Limited, incorporated by a special purpose vehicle in 2018 in the Republic of Mauritius for purposes of establishing Ghana SkyTrain Limited to develop the SkyTrain project through a concession on design, build, finance and operate arrangement. Despite receiving the money almost four years ago in February 2019, the SPV, known as the AI SkyTrain Consortium Holdings, according to the Auditor General, is yet to obtain a license required for the SkyTrain project. The inability to secure the license, the AG said, could hamper the project's feasibility studies, which inform the project's economics for approval. The two million US dollars to Africa Investor Holdings as full consideration for 10 ordinary shares in the SPV. The report, however, disclosed that the premium paid for each share, which was 199,000 US dollars, in the SPV has reported a net liability for the year December 31st, 2020. Though the AG noted that feasibility studies are ongoing, the report is, however, apprehensive that the investment in the SPV might not be recovered if the SkyTrain project is unable to secure the licensing as well as executive and parliamentary approval. <music>